This is the content section of the video, so click on what you want to watch or let the video run. Here are the performance notes for the PE2, which you can pause and take a moment to look at. Here are the major differences between the 87 and 110 series. As you see, the 110 has the Blister turret and the RPK-10. First off, we'll press Ctrl C and go into the navigator position. Down in the lower right here, we have some radio navigation equipment. And underneath that, there's some other gauges to cover airspeed and altitude. Looking forward, we can see the pilot right there. This gun position is straightforward. T picks up the gun, R will cock it, Shift T brings up the iron sight, and then just move around and fire. Now I press Ctrl C to bring up the next position. This is the gunner slash radio operator. First gun he picks up is in the belly. That opens up and has a slightly different iron sight than usual. And pressing Shift C will bring up the next gun, which is on the side. You can press Shift T to the gun sight, and you can see that it doesn't have a very good field of fire. Pressing Shift C again, that'll swap that gun to the opposite side of the fuselage. Then to get back to controlling the belly gun, you hit Shift C again. Now you might have seen the receiver at the back of the fuselage earlier. This is the other part, which is the transmitter, and this is what the radio operator would also use during flight. So it's a brief overview of the two gunners, so we'll go back to the cockpit and go over the instruments there. As always, we'll start at the left hand side and work our way around. Up top there's an antifreeze control, and we see RPM controls for both engines. Moving forward increases RPM, and backwards decreases RPM. Then we have a supercharger in its first and second gear. The blue handles are the mixture, pulling it back makes it a rich, and pushing it forward leans it out. In front of the mixture we have the throttles. Pushing it forward increases manifold pressure, and pulling it back decreases manifold pressure. Now the little blue switch is hidden a little bit there, that's what controls the speed brakes. Pushing the switch forward will extend the speed brakes, and then pulling the switch back will retract them. Now onto the flaps and the flaps indicator. Same with the speed brake as you can see for the extension and retraction of the flaps. This is for the Series 87. It's different in the 110 I'll go through that in a minute. This is the black switch up at the left, that's the elevator trim. Pulling it back will bring the nose up, and pushing it forward will bring the nose down. Then we have the aileron trim underneath that. Pulling it right will make the aircraft roll right, and left will make the aircraft roll left. And likewise with the rudder trim, you'll yaw right, and your yaw left depending on the switch. Above our trims we have the landing gear indicator, where green is down and locked, blank is in transition, and red is up and locked. Moving on to the main instrument panel, we'll start at the top with the airspeed indicator in kilometers per hour, then there's the compass, then an artificial horizon, in the lower left is the vertical speed indicator, then there'll be the turn and bank indicator, and the altimeter measured in kilometers and meters. Moving to the top of the panel we see another difference. We normally have the radio course indicator, but in the 110 series it also has the flap indicator up here. Moving to the right hand side, the yellow is the fuel gauge, on the right of that is ambient air temperature, underneath is the manifold pressures for engines 1 and 2, followed by the tachometers for engines 1 and 2, then the nitrogen pressure, then the fuel pressures for 1 and 2, and oil pressure for engines 1 and 2. Now as we look downwards, there's another panel underneath here, and we can see that there's a clock, and there's oil temperature for engines 1 and 2, and water temp for engines 1 and 2, with another compass that's down at the pilot's right leg. Now we can see the red knob there, that's the landing gear control. Then on this electrical panel, we have the water radiators for engines 1 and 2. Up opens them, and down will close them. Then we can have a look at a few lights. Those are the instrument and the cockpit lights. Then the switch above that, that controls the landing light, so you can turn that on and off. And then we add the navigation lights which can be turned on and you can see the effect on the wings there. Now to start the PE2, you can do both engines individually, but I'm just going to do both at the same time. So we make sure the throttle is just a little bit forward, put the RPM control to fully away, make the mixture fully rich, Make sure the water and oil radiator are both closed, and then you press E to start the engines. So once both engines start, we lean out the mixture and taxi off to the runway. And as usual, we skip taxiing over the takeoff.
taking off and the PE2 is pretty straightforward. Start off by putting the RPM control fully forward, bring the mixture to full rich, extend the flaps 15 degrees, the speed brake will be retracted, both radiators will be open, and then we'll increase the throttle to maximum and we'll rotate at about 150 k's an hour, and then once we hit 200 we retract the gear and flaps. So as we start applying throttle to get ourselves moving, we add a bit of forward stick to get the tail off the ground and help build us up with more airspeed. Applying rudder to keep it straight on the runway. So we start bringing the nose down a bit, maintain the attitude, and then we'll lift off about 150 km per hour. Note the attitude you have on takeoff, because we're going to be replicating this when we come into land. So now we're establishing our climb. As it's increased, we can attract the gear. Now we can also attract the flaps and decrease that mixture slightly. Let's circuit and go out to the landing checklist. Start off with our speed. On downwind, you want to have about 200 km per hour. Shut the water radiator, deploy the gear, and then the flaps will extend to 15 degrees. Then we'll turn onto a circular basin final when the runway is 45 degrees between the wind and the tail. And as we make this turn, we'll reduce power and begin descending at 150 meters per minute. And once we come around onto final, we'll send the flaps out to 30 degrees, followed by adding some nose down trim and approaching at 190 to 200 kilometers per hour with an aim to touch down at 160. All right, so now that we're coming onto downwind, we can deploy the gear and start bleeding off that excess speed. Since we're going to be running at reduced engine power, we also close the water radiator to prevent any excess cooling. So we can just continue on downwind, let the drag from the gear do its job and bring our speed down. Always want to make sure we're travelling in the right position relative to the runway, so we can have a quick check of that. Runway's under the wingtip. So now we can put our flaps down to 15 degrees. And we just adjust our power to keep our speed at 200 km per hour for the remainder of downwind. Another check of the runway position. Keep flying straight ahead on this heading, and then we'll turn on the circular basin final when we hit that 45 degree point. This looks about the right spot there. So now we can begin our turn on the basin final, reduce power slightly, and we'll begin our descent. Now as we continue on this circular basin final, remember that as we come on the final, you're going to want to deploy the flaps at 30 degrees. This will give us a nice nose down attitude to where we can see the entire runway. Now as we end up deploying the flaps at 30 degrees now, that's going to cause increased drag. So to maintain our approach speed of 200 k's, we're going to have to increase power a little bit. You can also trim the elevator out to maintain your approach that you want. In this case I'm using nose down trim. Now if you recall earlier, I asked you to try and remember the sight picture you had on takeoff because we're going to maintain this when we come into land. So as we flare and bleed off the extra speed, we want to try and touch down so the top of the course indicator is level with the horizon. So if we come into flare and maintain our power setting, bring the course indicator to the horizon, We'll touch down on the main wheels and then we reduce power to allow the table to fall down to the ground. And as you're rolling down the runway, apply full back pressure and some brakes till we come to a stop. That was the Famil video for the PE2. If you like the videos and you want to see more, then hit subscribe in the top left corner and let me know in the comments below.